Don't be afraid. They are just people who flock to the stores because of discounts. Most of them are around retirement age and have a lot of time on their hands. Chinese people call those elderly women Dama. In addition to hunting for sales, another well-known activity by the Dama is square dancing. If you are in New York, you may see them too. This neighborhood in Flushing has a large Chinese population. They dance to red songs, glorifying the Chinese Communist Party. It is how they celebrated the July 1 Communist Party's 100th anniversary from far away in the United States. This video was republished in China's state-level media, including People's Daily. Apparently, the CCP is pleased with the habitual behavior of these overseas Chinese. However, the person who filmed the video was outraged. She intended to tell the public that this was a group of Chinese smuggled into the U.S. from Fujian Province, China, and describes their behavior as bizarre. In mainland China, this type of dance is relatively common. It is a dance performed voluntarily for fitness purposes in the early morning or the evening after dinner in open areas such as squares and parks, accompanied by high decibel rhythmic music. This is how it got its name, square dance. Most of the participants are older adults who experienced China's 10-year-long cultural revolution from 1966 to 1976. As you can see, square dancing is not only in China, but has gradually spread overseas. For example, it can be seen in Sunset Park in New York, the square in front of the Louvre in Paris, the Red Square in Moscow, Russia, and Romania in Europe. Some overseas critics believe that square dancing is a variation and extension of the loyalty dance to Mao. What is the loyalty dance? It was a dance performed by young people in their 20s during the Cultural Revolution to express their loyalty to Mao Zedong in the squares and streets. For example, in the movie The Last Emperor, there is a description of the loyalty dance. In recent years, with the gradual popularity of square dancing in China, incidents of loud noise disturbing the public often occur, and they have also caused distress to nearby residents. In September 2018, in Hunan province, a resident went downstairs to talk to the square dancing people that were disturbing his child's studies. He was verbally attacked by over 10 dama, which triggered a heart attack that he died from. This tragic incident has attracted a lot of attention from the public. Some netizens remarked, I don't understand why these dama have to dance at night and make so much noise. Students have to write homework and office workers want to relax after a long day. These dama start to come out around these times to disturb people, and they even attack aggressively. What a bunch of selfish people. In 2013, a Beijing resident named Xu attempted to disperse a square dancing group near his home by firing a gun into the air and releasing three Tibetan mastiffs. He was subsequently arrested for illegal possession of a weapon. After the arrest, Xu said he had trouble sleeping, so he built a house in a quiet area, not realizing that there was a square next to his yard. Every morning and evening, there is a group of people dancing in the square. His brain hurts from the vibrations, and he can't sleep at all. In 2014, in a community in Wenzhou, Zhejiang province, after repeated failure to negotiate with Dama, more than 600 residents chipped in RMB 260,000 and bought a remote directional sound amplification system. Using this system, they have successfully repelled Dama by playing alarms once they started dancing. Other city residents have tried to stop the nuisance by tossing water bombs and rocks or shooting water cannons from high-rises. 
A report by Xinhua, China's state news agency, suggested at the time that the new square dance would become a nationally standardized, scientifically choreographed movement that brings positive energy to people, but most dance groups refused to adopt the officially approved routine. Many Chinese commented online that the government should invest more money to build recreational spaces for retirees who want to exercise and develop friendships through dancing. Others said that this measure would do nothing to reduce the noise of such activities. In May, a group of kids played basketball on the weekend at an outdoor basketball court in Henan province. As they were playing, a group of dama in red clothes entered the court. The dama demanded the kids to get out so they could have the basketball court for the square dance. They threw out the kids' ball and laid down their big stereo, claiming that the sports authority approved it. The two parties got into conflict, and the dama ended up hitting one of the kids. The police were called in and got involved. The media reported the incident, and people observed. It is not the elderly people who have become bad, but the bad people have become old. Old Chinese people no longer act respectively. An online video shows an older woman put a note on a car near a public parking space. The message says, please do not park here. This is where they do the square dance. The young man was upset when the sticker was stuck and could not be removed entirely from his car. He confronted the older woman. She then laid herself down on the ground and screamed, bully. The young man backed down and drove away. In the past few years, this has become a social phenomenon rather than an isolated case reported in the Chinese media. What has happened to the elderly in China? Since ancient times, China has been known as the land of etiquettes and rituals. With 5,000 years of civilization, the Chinese people have embraced the mandate of heaven, being modest and courteous, dignified and orderly. The term, a land of etiquettes and rituals, was used to describe China by foreign envoys of different historical periods. But why are the elderly Chinese behaving in such a perplexing manner? Let's do a little math. Those in the age group of 50 to 70 were youth and teenagers who experienced the Cultural Revolution. In their formative years, the culture and education they received was China's Communist Party culture after the CCP destroyed the traditional culture. It has given them a distinct character of struggle and hatred in their words and actions. In the 1980s, China began to open up to reform. After the 1990s, there has been a massive influx of capital from Europe and the US into China. Entertainment venues such as dance halls, pubs and restaurants, and high-class hotels have blossomed all over China. By this time, this demographic had reached young and middle age. Chinese men with money in their pockets began to go out for fun. The men, trying to prove that they were posh like Westerners, irked the relatively conservative Chinese women who felt that dancing in public was more decent than men and women dancing closely in private. As a result, from the late 1990s and early 2000s, disco-like dances began to appear sporadically in the public squares. When this group of people reached retirement age, which is now the present time, the Chinese Communist Party has had such tight control of speech and public opinion that no social groups and organizations are allowed unless approved. This has left little room for social activities for the elderly in Chinese society. Thus, Square dancing has become one of the few activities that people can gather and enjoy collectively. In Western countries or any normal society, the elderly population has a relatively rich life and can participate in clubs and organizations of all types and formats to live out their retirement years through public social activities. 
The current generation of Chinese seniors is being tested to see if they have acquired enough wisdom throughout their lifetime to escape the branding that the Chinese Communist Party has forced on them over the past 100 years.